And hello everybody, welcome back to the channel guys, I hope you're all well, before we do get into today's video as always, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Rangers content. Um, sorry, just a quick disclaimer, I have been kicked into the office so it is a little bit echoey, then yeah, I apologise, I'll try not to record it all of the time, um, but yeah. It is what it is. The show still goes on and the Clermont train still goes on. Yes, super frustrated that I've not heard any news yet that Philippe Clermont's not been sacked. Um, but as a lot of Rangers insiders are rightfully saying, it seems as though that they aren't going to sack him. I mean, the board came out and at the moment, I do think Philippe Clermont almost talks as if he's indispensable. Uh, but after um, this week's game against Aberdeen, I'm firmly on the Clermont out train and there's no way back for me now. I said I fought game three games. Um, there's just no style of play and I don't see there's any progression with Philippe Clermont at the helm. And people can keep on talking about the project. Everyone can keep on talking about the situation that, well, we keep going around the conveyor belt and sacking managers and sacking managers and sacking managers and it gets us absolutely nowhere. But it doesn't mean that we've got the right man in charge and, you know, almost like whipping a dead horse. And I do think Clermont is like that. He's lost his his aura. One of the things I said about him when he came in last year is he had that aura. He seemed like a proper manager. Came in through the door, lifted the players in the media. He was very, he just had that aura, that, that, that a bit about him that he was a proper manager. And won as a trophy, looked like the real deal. Uh, took us to a title race. But ever since the summer, honestly, the guy's just been full of excuses after excuses after excuses. And genuinely, in my opinion, I, I, I just, he looks like a shadow of the man that he was when he came in and I don't think there was any way back because uh, I think he's losing the Rangers well, I think he's losing the Rangers players on the Rangers board sorry there was no Rangers board there's no such thing uh, the Rangers, he's lost the Rangers fans he's lost the Rangers players it looks like as well and honestly his coaching methods just look absolutely shambolic I don't even know what the hell it is I think it's a patient build up but it doesn't work in Scotland it doesn't work you know you need to be able to beat the 10 man block you can't be patient in these games and yeah his coaching philosophy is stubbornness sticking with it sticking with the same players is his downfall and like many managers beforehand you know not making a decision to get rid of certain players was always going to be a downfall called it in the summer and certain players that are there um are, are his downfall now again he's going to be staying in it does look like at this moment in time people uh, will look at it if we beat uh, motherwell we're into a cup final great uh, one of the easiest runs to a League Cup final, um, but we ain't winning it. Uh, the, 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 the team that wins um, the other semi-final will win the Cup competition because there's no chance Philippe Comont can get the better of Brendan Rodgers and Celtic. He's never won an Old Firm game and there's no chance he's getting the better of Aberdeen because they are levels above us right now, which is super, super embarrassing. Guys, we're third. I'm not even talking about us being in second. We're third in the table, nine points behind second. And a man's still in the job, and he looks like he's going to stay in the job. If there's a reason we go out in the semi-final this weekend, definitely gone. He will definitely be gone because the fans will be outside Ibrox uh, pushing to get him out of the door. Now, whilst he isn't gone, I do think he's a dead man walking. We seen with Eric Ten Hag over the over the summer. Um, he won like a trophy, um, but his style of play it also mirrors it a little bit of Philippe Clement. Um, you know, there has been good bits of Eric Ten Hag's tenure at Manchester United. Uh, he won them the cup. Clement won us a cup. It looked like it was things good. He's brought in all these players, all these sort of stuff, and gave the same sort of excuses about gelling and having patient and waiting for time. Um, and Manchester United just stunk the place out. And to be fair, if Manchester United sacked the manager last summer, then they would have not been in this position. They would have not been £200 million down um, and they would have been in a better position uh, for it. Now they're picking up the pieces of all the, all the things that he spent in the summer. And I look at Colomont this kind of same way now. Obviously, it didn't start in the summer, but it started now. He's a dead man walking. I don't think there is any way he turns this around and it's kind of you know, what happens if and when. Um, but look, we are closing into an international break and that's usually where managers' graveyards coincide and come for up, come around from. Um, and there's two games, I think, now to go to that November international break. So we'll probably see how he does. I mean, the bare minimum is he has to get to a final and win the next game. Again, I still don't think that's enough. They'll have to make a decision on it. Now, the November international break actually does kind of coincide a little bit with one of the Rangers' favourites. I know Philippe Clement's still in the job, but there is certain names 
doing the rounds. And this is when I know someone's job is uh, coming to an end. Genuinely, I know that's when it's coming to an end, when you start to see all these bookies favorites and all this sort of stuff. Um, but um, guys, uh, one of those people is Kevin Muscat, who this weekend plays a um, title decider. I think if he wins the game, then his, his team Shanghai Port win the league. Um, and that's his third league title in three different countries. You can say what you want about the level of standards of the leagues. Guys, this is Scotland. It's not that crazy. As much as we like to kid ourselves on, the Scottish League ain't that crazy good. Do you know what I mean? There's usually only two teams going for it. You know, from a competitive standpoint, I'd probably say China is a little bit more competitive. I'd say Japan is probably a little bit more competitive. Um, and Australia certainly is a bit more competitive, despite the level. And he's won three league titles to nearly, what well, if he wins this weekend, he will have three league titles in three different countries. Now, he was one of the people going head to head with uh, Philippe Clement uh, back in last October. And basically Craig Moore has come out and said that he'll be keeping tabs on this one, of course. But he said that he thinks the timing, in his opinion, was uh, last year. And he said, I don't think that this is the right time. He's on loads of money at this moment in time, playing with good players like Oscar have five foreigners that make a huge difference to their level. But he knows how to read the room and manage at the very, very top. As stated, it's huge money out there, but what Kevin potentially would have been able to bring to the table was the Asian market. It's a bigger market place than everyone thinks, but it's probably, um, the, the boat has probably sailed with regards to coming to Rangers. Now, um, that's interesting to be fair with regards to Craig Moore because I think everyone's obvious favorite would be um, Kevin Muscat uh, just because he actually has a style of play. I think he's now proved himself at yet another club. A lot of people saying that we've made the wrong appointment, the wrong body uh, that we made the appointment of. And to be fair, I wasn't too sure on Kevin Muscat last year. But one thing about him, he has such a distinct style of play. If you look at coaches like Slot, Pep Guardiola, um, and Spostagoglu, I hate to say it, but they all have sort of distinct principles that they stand by and you have a clear pattern of how they're going to play. And um, Kevin Muscat's the same, which would solve a problem that we've currently got and fucking entertain us a little bit at Ibrox. Uh, but it is slightly worrying that um, his friend Craig Morris came out and kind of said that, that that boat has sailed. But then again, I would sit on, on the fence and say that, well, actually, I don't necessarily think it has sailed because Shanghai Port, yes, he's on a bag out there. Yes, he's making a decent bit of money out there. But I don't necessarily think that you know, progression in his career, he's going to stay in what Shanghai Port for the rest of his for the rest of his time. A best way into Europe, and from a financial standpoint, yeah, you take a step back, you go to a team like Rangers because if you look at the managers that have done well at the two old firm clubs, you go on to Spurs. Ange Postecoglou did. Uh, you go on to. Um, you go on to Aston Villa, like Steven Gerrard did. You went on to Leicester City, like Brendan Rodgers did. It's a foot into the Premier League, the, arguably the best league in the world. So while I also respect Craig Moore's saying, um, I do think from a financial standpoint, you do need to make that step back, um, especially if you do want to progress as a manager. And he looks kind of ambitious. He has jumped around jobs quite a little bit. So... Um, if he wins the league out there, there's absolutely no reason why he should stay there other than a bag. But Rangers would be a great place to go if he was confident. But then again, if you're a manager on the up and coming, would you want to come to our club? Probably not because we're a shampoo, because we're an absolute shit stay. And to be fair, I don't trust the board to make the... Um, to make the right appointment for, for Rangers in general. Uh, but yeah, all the best to Kevin Muscat uh, with the league this weekend. Um, and maybe uh, the, he would be my first choice at this moment in time. I'm that confident now. We're starting to hear Bookie's favourites. Uh, that Clermont is a uh, dead man walking. And it's, um, it's going to be a matter of when, not if. Um, with regards to Steven Gerrard, quickly, I'll just give my 50 cents on him. I don't think Steven Gerrard is a manager that we should be inviting back. I see a lot of nostalgia with regards to Gerrard, and Gerrard took over us in a great time. And what Gerrard always says is he had an aura. We talked about aura. I think he had an aura with regards to people listening to him, people respected him, and all that kind of stuff. But you've got to remember, you know, it's... It wasn't all plain sailing. Whilst we did get behind the project, we were at a different place as a football club. And honestly, after he left Rangers and kind of during this time at Rangers, you know, he kind of stuck the place out a little bit towards the end. And actually, without that new manager bounce, 
under Gio. I don't think we would have went on to win the go on to, to do the Europa League. Um, and since then, he's stunk the place out of Aston Villa. You look at what Emery's doing with that same team, uh, getting him into the Champions League. Um, and then, of course, he's gone out of Atavak. He spent a kind of lot of money out there, and it's stinking the place out there as well. I think he's gone five games without a win or five defeats from the bounce or whatever it was. And there's like, reports that he could get kind of sacked, eliminated out of the cup to a second division team. I don't think Steven Gerrard is the guy that people want. Um, if you want a new manager, I would certainly look at doing Kevin Muscat. He would be someone with a point to prove that has a distinct style of play. Um, David Moyes, again, another one of those guys. I mean, Scottish kind of knows the game a little bit as well. He could potentially, but these are the early bookies' favourites. But certainly, I would go for Kevin Muscat this, this early on at this moment in time. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens. But um, right now, Clement's still in a job, and uh, Craig Moore seems to think that the boat has sailed with regards to Kevin Muscat. But we'll have to wait and see. Rangers fans, that's all I've got for you today. As always, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Rangers content. Thank you, troops, and I'll see you next time. Take care.